Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess from Body Light. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's go ahead and dive into the details for the full moon that's happening in the sign of Leo. So the Leo full moon that's happening February 9th at 2.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those of you guys that want to get the exact time, maybe you're pulling your charts, maybe you wake up, specifically you set an alarm and you start working your magic during that time. So I do have the chart pulled up in front of me. I have my notes here on my left and we are gonna dive into this. Not only is this reading and this message going to be astrologically influenced because we're pulling the chart for the moment, but there's going to be a lot of intuitive components to this because that's just how I work my magic. That's what I'm good at and that's my gift to you. So there's a few things that are really standing out to me and the obvious is the fact that the moon is happening in the sign and the full moon is happening in the sign of Leo. Opposite of that is Aquarius. I don't know if you guys have seen my video talking about the energy of this week as a whole, as a collective on starting February 3rd, but I can't talk about astrology right now and talking about the planets without referencing and without looking at Uranus and Saturn because both of those planets are ruling the energy of Aquarius. So yes, this video is about the full moon that's happening in the sign of Leo, but what happens is with a full moon is that the sun and the moon are opposing each other and Leo's opposite is Aquarius. Now Aquarius has been making a lot of changes, a lot of changes. In fact, when I was pulling the chart, the first thing that I heard from my guides is the word revelation. And I also heard this message of trusting in that revelation. The reason why I believe that this is, is because Uranus is one of the planets that sparks revelation. It sparks incredible, impactful change, not just in this moment, but for the benefit and for the sake of your future and all of our future, all of mankind's future. It's not thinking about the here, the now, the present. It's thinking light years ahead. That's the beauty of Uranus. And when we have planets moving through the sign of Aquarius, which we have the sun moving through the sign of Aquarius um, at the time of me pulling this chart, when we have the, this emphasis on the energy of Aquarius, what the, the vision that I've been getting is like people touching you know, uh, like touching someone and getting a spark or plugging something in and getting a spark. Now that could actually have happened in your life and hopefully you're, you're okay, but it's more of a metaphor. It's more of these revelations, these shocking revelations, these shocking truths that are there to kind of shift your perspective, to shift your orbit so that you are able to pull into your life things that are better for you and so that you're able to become the better version, the highest version of yourself. So I don't wanna say this and shock you guys and be like, okay, this is gonna be something that's gonna be scary or depleting of your energy in some way. Although the full moons do have the tendency to kind of, I don't wanna say drain your energy, but they require a lot of rest. But then there's the 50, other 50% 50 that are like supercharged, that's like me. I'm the one that, you know, I work 9 p.m., <laughs> 12 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. into the morning and it's like, you know, it's like, someone else's 12 p.m. Like that's just my natural state. I've always been that way and definitely under the light of the full moon. But I, so this this energy, you know, that, that we're working with, it's not there to come in and give you the one-two punch. It's not there to hurt you. It's not there to punish you, but it is there to kind of open your eyes a little bit and to help you to see things from a different perspective and to do things a little differently. And also to separate yourselves from things that don't serve you anymore. That's why it's a revelation because it's a truth that's been under the radar for quite some time that is from the higher power from the universe and we have to kind of like i don't want to say accept it in a way that it's bad but embrace it for what all of the good that it can bring and it's usually our perspective on how we see things is the only thing that really limits us from the abundance of the universe from you know living fearlessly to living effortlessly it's our perspective that locks us up and makes us feel afraid or terrified or doubt what can and will ultimately happen for the good so that's what i'm seeing here is i do see this revelation that's occurring and depending on your chart depending on what's going on in your personal life and i could see that through the astrology chart your specific chart this reading is general so I, I'm not gonna break it down into specifics in what area of your life, but you'll know what is it I'm talking about. But um, depending on your chart, it's going to influence you and impact you in that a very specific way. You know, depending on what Aquarius rules within your chart and what 
Leo rules within your chart because that's where this energy is mostly concentrated. Now, looking at Leo, there's this heightened sense of focusing on the heart. I find it very interesting that this full moon is going to be falling in the sign and occurring in the sign of Leo, and I'm talking about heart opening, and I just felt guided last this weekend to do a heart opening and reawakening crystal bowl meditation it was only 15 minutes but it felt so necessary but it just goes to show that we are so all aligned like we really are moving in alignment with what's going on in the cosmos what's going on in the universe and that's what it is that i'm seeing for us for this full moon is that your heart is really trying to be reawakened and it happens through shifts of your perspective detachment of certain things, separation of certain things. And then it, when you separate, when you detach, it allows the universe to kind of redirect you so that you can realign. The thing that's really standing out to me as I'm looking at the chart is there's this emphasis on the higher will. And basically it's allowing yourself to detach from and to disconnect from you know these limiting beliefs that say okay it's gotta be this way. It's always been this way so it can only always it can only be this way forever but the reality is is that that was one way of doing things that may or may not have served the the purpose but if we are entering into the realms of heart opening and re um reawakening and revelations then the old ways do not serve the new way that we are walking into and the full moon is light lighting that up and and making itself known and giving you information downloads from your third eye through your crown chakra to your heart to help to guide you and all of this is for your is you want to connect to the higher will all of this is for your highest good not only for for you and i but for all of us even outside of the bahati vibe tribe even those people who are not even connecting and not even interested in astrology they're still influenced by it so these are some things that as i'm seeing here i'm feeling like you guys are downloading your purpose you're downloading your destiny you're downloading um, truths about yourself you're disconnecting and detaching from relationships expectations things that you've been holding on to not even some some of you guys don't even realize it but you're when you get that shock when you get that little blip of information maybe it's something someone says maybe it's um, something that you read maybe it's a sermon that you hear maybe it's a video that you see or the time that we spend together something that's on an Instagram but something about it shifts you and it's, it's literally the divine speaking to you and trying to reawaken your heart so that you can realign once again. And this is not, you know, it's not a mistake that you're on this path. It's just divine timing. Even me, I'm constantly getting reawakened by uh, circumstances and situations that present themselves in my lives. And of course, it's divine timing. It's written all over the charts. So instead of me getting, you know, looking at it and seeing, oh, this is a mistake. I've done something wrong or I, it's a failure or I'm frustrated, I embrace it and I allow myself to accept it and to bring it into my life because I'm like, thank you for the growth. Thank you for the challenges, right? So there are a few things that are really standing out to me and looking back at the chart and it's the fact that Venus does rule love, beauty and relationships and value and money, but it's it's more than that. It's more than those tangible things. It's about what it is that we're attracted to and what are we attracting. And Venus is moving out of the sign of Pisces or moved out of the sign of Pisces and now she's entered into the realms of Aries energy. And not the first thing that she approaches and that she makes contact with is the vertex. Is the, ver the vertex point which just happens to be falling in the sign of Leo. And when I say it just happens to be there is literally no coincidence so basically what vertex the vertex point is it's the, the point of faded encounters and faded cir circumstances and situations so we'll put a pin in that and we'll revisit um, the next thing that she comes in contact with is Chiron the wounded healer and that point is the space a vulnerable space within all of our lives that show us that okay here you will find the recipe for your healing and then your recovery but at first it might feel painful so there is something here that you are attracting into your life or that you are drawn towards that you are being called to observe to examine and to not be afraid of it that that's the thing about um aries energy because venus is moving to the sign of aries is that 
it's not very it's not passive at all <laughs> like it's very in your face it's very forward it's you know let's talk about it let's not talk about it let's do it let's let's be about it like what are we doing about this and basically what it is that i'm seeing as i'm looking at the chart and we're, fo we're revolving around the heart and we're looking at the heart um actively looking at the heart is that it's 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 call it's a call for you to not only to observe and to be aware but to do something about what it is that you are prioritizing what is it that is adding value to your life or taking away from the from, from the value of your life what are you attracted to what do you need to, to disconnect and detach yourself from what always catches your attention but always gets you in a bind these are things that the universe the planets are saying literally don't talk about it anymore like you can talk well it's okay to talk about it but also match that with action match it with change because as venus connects with chiron at, at the time of the full moon you are getting a key that you have to lift up put in the door open the door and open it and and enter into this new realm this new life this new territory new love new energy and all of it is a part of this grand revelation this grand I don't want to say truth seeking, but some so many of you guys are actually asking yourself, what is the truth of this? What is, why have we been doing it this way? Why have I been doing it this way? Why do we accept this as, like, why do we accept the status quo and we don't want more for ourselves? Why are we afraid to ask for more for ourselves? Why do I only talk about it, but I never match my talk with my actions? Why do you only talk about it and you don't match your talk with your actions? Do you see, see what I'm saying? There's a lot of movement here, a lot of action that, is getting sparked here but all of this is not you know for no reason you want to do it with intent you want to do it with intention you want to be mindful of your subconscious desires meaning that you've been doing a lot of you guys have been doing a lot of soul work a lot of spiritual work you're not running from from these truths you're not running from these shadow sides of yourself you're in fact you're confronting them by journaling them by capturing them by not expecting an answer overnight but embracing the fact that you know there is an unknown variable here that is impacting the outcome and that's what it is that i'm seeing is that you guys are really asking these questions of yourself and being open to to progressing and to doing better for yourselves the other 30 percent are are hiding you're hiding under a rock and you're spewing negativity all over and you'll catch up inevitably i'm setting intention and i'm hoping that you do but the rest of us really are trying to do better for ourselves and this is again because and i can't talk about a, a pull an astrology chart in 2020 or 2019 and not talk about the fact that jupiter and pluto and saturn have been moving to the sign of capricorn that's been totally dismantling and just destroying and rebuilding our structure when I see this, you guys, all I hear across the board from the chart is generational curses. It's wild to me how I am, am watching not only myself, but my peers, my tribe, and my community actively breaking generational curses on a day-to-day -day basis. These are things that our families and their like and the, the, the bloodline couldn't do, and yet in this lifetime you have actively come in with an axe and you broke it you you totally disconnected the chain the binds that have been holding you back this is something that's written in the chart this is something that i've been talking about this is something that i've been working on myself this is something that i've been predicting and i see you guys also mirroring it back and and being more open to talking about it and that's another thing that is a part of this generational curse is that you guys are moving from a space where you are speaking from your heart you are not uncomfortable with being vulnerable you're not uncomfortable with embracing growth with embracing mental emotional spiritual healing you're talking about it you're connecting you're creating healthier boundaries to protect what you have worked so hard to build and you want to actually thrive the fact that you want more for yourself the fact that you are realizing that you're worthy the fact that you are willing to confront the areas of 
of self-doubt and limitation that we accidentally imposed on ourselves because it's passed on from generation to generation and you say no with me it stops here that is a generational curse that you got once it touched you it couldn't it ended it ended with you and that's something that's going to pass on maybe through your children but definitely through your community through your friends the more that we talk the more that we connect the more that we communicate the more that we exchange our experiences from an authentic place from an open place from a vulnerable place the more difference it's going to make that is a part of your legacy that's what i'm seeing within this chart that is huge this is so huge I will say that parts of the journey are going to be lonely parts of the journey are going to be isolating you might have to disconnect from your community from your neighborhood from your family from what used to be your tribe and now you're realizing I don't fit in here you but it's aspects um, and tools like the internet and social media um, you know you know these little groups that are building up and the shame that we're throwing behind like we don't we don't operate from shame anymore shame what is that what is that you know what i mean it's just we're just transcending these are things that i'm seeing us reconnect with again um at the time of of this full moon and it's when you make the space for you to connect with your heart and to ask yourself what is it that i love who am i what do i want for myself what do i deserve what is blocking me? What is hindering me? When you make that time and that space, you're disconnecting from the old ways and you're stepping into the new. That is the most beautiful revelation that is happening in your life now. Now, like I was saying, everyone's chart is so specific, so so specifically unique. And these readings that I'm doing now are general, but they're covering all of us as a whole. So I can only talk about this big chunk and I can't break it down into the smaller chunks of your personal chart because I'm not looking at your personal chart right now. I'm looking at the general, what's going on as a collective. So keep in mind that there are certain areas of your life where there's a specific area of your life that's getting all of the universe's attention right now and is is really at the time of the full moon that says revelation is this. Um, Accept, don't accept the status quo, but accept and embrace this change, right? So we don't want you to hold on and be like, this is the way that it has always been, so this is the way that it always will be. We want you to let go of that, disconnect from that, because that's already been rebuilt. At this point, you guys have already seen it with Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter moving to the sign of Capricorn. Those old ways have been dismantled a minute ago. Like, and by a minute, I mean like years. It's been in the works for years. So we're letting go of those old ways and now we're stepping into this higher will. We're stepping into this higher purpose and all of those answers are coming through to you through your intuition, through your heart space, through the quiet time that is that you're, you know, spending um, with yourself, with your guides, at your altar, meditating, out in nature, right? Those old spaces of, oh, I can only experience God or I can only experience the divine in church or in this area or with this person, you've thrown that out. It feels like the divine is everywhere. The divine is within within you. You see the divine with, with, within others. So you really are connecting to this higher will, this higher purpose, this higher destiny for your life. And through that, you will experience not only healing, but recovery. You'll experience growth, abundance, and not only abundance, I mean like you know, getting everything that is that you need, like your needs being met, your desires being met. But it's one thing to call out to the universe and ask for what it is that you think you want. And it's another to call out to the universe and ask the universe to provide you what you know you want, what you know you, what you know you need, what you know you desire. There are two separate things there because one, is going to fulfill you when it shows up. It's going to help you to thrive. The other, when it shows up, despite it being, I knew that was gonna happen, despite it being so amazing and it's manifesting in, it, in your life, it actually depletes, depletes you of your energy. It depletes you of your, you know, it doesn't feel good. It feels empty. It feels superficial. So that's what it is that I'm seeing here is that through that space of really connecting with yourself, you're gonna get um, truth as far as, okay, this is actually who I am. This is exact, actually what I want. And knowing that it's going to be vulnerable, it's going to hit a little differently, meaning that it strikes your heart, it strikes your spirit as a truth and says, listen, just the fact that you tapped into the one thing or a few things that you know that you want the most is going to make you so vulnerable. That's the place that you want to be in. <laughs> That's how you know you're doing it right. I'm also seeing um, as the vertex and this vertex point entered into Leo, 
this is about truly it's it's about faded the faded um moments of the heart where it puts you at the right place at the right time and it's through those disruptions it's through those recalculating moments recalibrating moments where you're like waiting for for life to to reveal to you the next the next step the next phase of the journey it's almost like the gps reloading 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 like it, it can't pick up on the signal yet that's where a lot of you guys have been but really what's happening is that the universe is being like hold on we're picking up on the signal your higher self is picking up on the signal and once it clicks in it says okay this is the way to go this is how we're going to get there and that's what is i'm seeing for you guys it's very faded it's very triggering it's very vulnerable, but when you feel that, just know that you're on the right path and you're doing it right. So I hope that that makes sense for you guys. Um, I feel like I pretty much covered all of my bases here. Um, let me know down in the comments, you know, what is it that you're thinking and feeling and experiencing? Mercury and Neptune um, trining uh, the North Node in Cancer. This is another thing that's telling you we're trying to get you to where it is that you belong. But if you feel like you're recalibrating, it's it's good journal document it process work with your intuition work with your guides go to your altar meditate swim really swim go for a walk ground yourself dip your feet in the lake whatever it is that you have to do to connect to your higher self and to this higher will for your life do it it is good and it is right all right so make sure that you are subscribed to my youtube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from full moons blessings to you thank you to all who share and i'll see you in my next video bye